Hi, I'm Alice Bradley and I play with the Glenelg Sandville women's team and I live with type 1 diabetes. So type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition where the body's pancreas stops making all insulin altogether. So with type 2 diabetes, they still have some insulin in their body, but it's not working as effectively as it used to. With type 1 diabetes, your body doesn't have any insulin anymore. So you have to give that through um, an injection or through an insulin pump. And insulin moves your sugar levels, moves the sugar from your blood into your muscles so your body can use it for energy. If you can't do that, you get really, really tired. Your body starts to use fat stores instead, which can make your blood acidic, make you really, really tired, and people can become unwell from that. So the only way to um, cure or manage diabetes is to give the insulin artificially. I was diagnosed when I was 13, so 2007. So I'm 27 now. So I've been living with it for quite a while. So I was the typical kid that was playing netball, basketball, softball, athletics. So it was quite busy. But the one thing I remember that was really great was that my doctor at the time when I was diagnosed said, this is great that you do so much sport, keep doing that and don't get deterred from doing that just because you have diabetes now. So that was really positive from the start, but I guess it was a bit of a, a juggle of how do I now do that and have diabetes. So that was a learning curve as well. There's lots of equipment around type one diabetes management now, which is great. So all day, every day, I wear a little insulin pump so this is connected to me um, all day and if I even sleep with it, um, I can take it off to shower. I do take it off for when I play games and trainings, um, but this feeds me with my insulin. I change the site once every three days and this is instead of giving four injections a day. It's um, great, I just put in what I'm eating, what sugar, um, what my sugar levels are, how much food I'm eating and it calculates how much to give me. Inside the pump, there is um, three mils of insulin in mine. So this will last about four days and I'll just replace that myself. And the new, the new pumps, probably like, I get a new one every five years or so. Um, but they're really great, they're very sturdy and obviously being connected all the time, they have to have really good wear and tear. And then I have a glucose sensor on my arm which I change once a fortnight. And that is what I can scan with my phone and it reads my sugar levels and can tell me if I'm trending to have higher sugar levels or if they're dropping or if they're just going stable. So that's been an amazing technology in the past few years. Um, the downfall with that one, with a lot of it, is the cost. Some people find it really hard to afford. Um, but hopefully, with more government rebates, it'll be more affordable for the community because it's amazing to be able to use. So, and then I have a finger pricker as well. So that's the manual one. If this doesn't work, then I do the classic test your blood, bring the blood out and put it on a little strip and that tells me what my sugars are. Um, my family's all been, always been involved with Glenelg. My brother plays still and my dad used to play. So always loved watching footy and grew up watching lots of football but I could only really play other girls sports when I was younger. So in 2018 I thought oh let's try and give something else a go and the Sanford women's comp had already started then so I was like great let's do some training. Moved away overseas and then joined up with a AFL group in London and played there which was really really fun. Met heaps of Aussies over there all just playing playing football together and having a great time so it was awesome. That was a great start to the footy journey and that was a nice social start and now I love playing and training hard and just building up my skills and fitness and obviously doing it in a great club with a, an awesome community behind it. So game day can be pretty hectic. Um, the, I get a lot of support from Tina, she's great. She has a little, um, like a little bum bag for me which we put my blood testing strips, lollies and my phone in and she carries that around with her. And so before a game I make sure I eat a good breakfast or a good lunch um, give myself my medication and then we'll really monitor my sugars before the game. If I'm going too low before a game, I might feel a bit sick if I have to eat a lot of food, so I really try and avoid that happening. Um, but before the game, I will go to see our um, trainer, Zach, or any of the other support staff that are there, and we really strap and reinforce my 
um, my glucose sensor because if it comes off I can't put another one in which is a shame um, so we put lots of tape around just to really hold it in place and um, it looks a bit interesting people think I have a bicep injury but it's just holding the, the sensor on um, and then during the game I'll get my sugar levels checked every quarter I'll come off and get that checked. If I feel a bit off during the quarter, then Tina or someone else will check my sugars then as well and I'll just bring myself off the field. Um, I might need to eat a bit of lollies during the game if I'm going low. Otherwise, I often run a lot higher during games because adrenaline really pushed my sugar levels up. So I'll often reconnect my insulin pump, give some medication and then take it off and give, it back, give that back to Tina. And then after the game, I check my sugars a lot because I can then drop quite low following exercise. So if we have a night game, I might be up in the night testing a few times or I'll get alarms on my phone that I've gone low so that'll wake me up during the night and I'll eat some lollies, midnight snack. Um, so there's a lot around game day, um, but it's great that the team's really supportive and um, you know our support staff, Tina, Kez, everyone's really great in making it run as smoothly as possible. If I've had a, a few trainings in a row where I've gone low and have had to sit out for a while, and everyone is just like so supportive. They don't think I'm being lazy and just sitting out because I can't be bothered. They know that it's for a medical reason. And then if they see me holding my little tub of jelly beans, they often are like, how are you going? Like, are you feeling okay? I've had a couple of games where I've been low at the start of the game and I can feel that because I feel, I already feel adrenaline from a game, but it's a different kind of adrenaline that I feel from um, being low or I'll be a bit shaky or I can just tell I'm not really concentrating right so and that's like interrupted our rotations which is I feel really bad about from like a team perspective but everyone's really really great and just like okay yep you got to start off that's fine we'll just do a different starting rotation and then everyone just keeps playing so it's great that it doesn't feel like it's been too disruptive but I'm very conscious of it and try not to make the team have to think about it too. Definitely once at our game at Adelaide Oval last year which was amazing and before the game I was like oh, I'm not feeling right this isn't good so um, I had to get some jelly beans in at the start of that and luckily got through the game well but I, definitely in the first quarter, I think I was a little bit spaced out. So, sorry, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> so, grand final. Like, yes, was yes. Was what was that like? That was amazing. That was such a great day. It was oh, one of the best days. When my adrenaline levels, are really, adrenaline levels are really high, that can really push my sugar levels up as well. So, I was probably quite high that day because of so much adrenaline and excitement around the day. Um, and then afterwards, just had fun and celebrated and didn't really pay too much focus to the sugars after that to make sure I got my hydration in and was eating. We had lots of food supplied from the team, which was awesome to celebrate. So I was pretty relaxed after that and all the diabetes went well, but yeah, best day. And we we're so, so lucky to be part of that for the women's team here at Glenelg. So in sport, there's been a few people like Nathan Bassett has been a, um, definitely been someone that's lived with diabetes in the past and has increased a little bit of awareness, but there's definitely still more that we can be doing. Um, I know there's a couple of other girls in the Sample W comp that have type 1 diabetes, um, but I haven't seen information about them or how they manage their diabetes, so there's definitely information we could be sharing. So my brother Andrew and I are going to do a fundraiser for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, the JDRF. So they are an amazing foundation that raise so much money every year for people with diabetes and specifically type 1 diabetes. So we are going to be doing a skydive on the 30th of April. It's been a bucket list item of mine, so I know it has been for Andrew's as well. Um, so we thought, great, what an opportunity. Rather than just pay to do it, we can raise money at the same time for a charity that means so much to us. So we are very excited to do that. And there's a minimum we have to raise each of um, $1,500 to be able to do it. So we're on the way to hitting that target each, which is really exciting. And all the money is going towards diabetes research, um, improving technology for people with diabetes. And it will just be a really great community event to have people supporting us down at the beach at Semaphore, watching us land. And for those of us jumping, like having an amazing experience in the meantime too. I'm so grateful for the Glenelg Football Club and everything it's been able to do for me and my family so far. Um, if we can have like, any support that can be provided from anyone in the community would be really, really appreciated. We have a link which we'll share to our donating page 
um, even just being able to share that and spread awareness on social media or talk about it to your friends would be amazing and um, we just really appreciate everything that everyone's able to do. So every little tiny donation is going to go such a long way in helping us reach our goal. So thank you so much to everyone that's already donated and to any future ones that come in, we really appreciate it.